Is anybody here this morning? Praise God. <laughs> anybody that's anybody is here this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Are you ready to give this morning? It's a blessing to give. I want to read you, to you from the message Bible this morning in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting with verse 3. It says, Now I'm sending the brothers to make sure you're ready, as I said you would be, so my bragging won't turn out to be just so much hot air. If some Macedonians and I happened to drop in on you and found you weren't prepared, we'd all be pretty red-faced, you and us, for acting so sure of ourselves. So to make sure that there will be no slip-ups, I recruited these brothers as an advance team to get you and your promised offering all ready before I get there. I want you to have all the time you need to make this offering in your own way. I don't want anything forced or hurried at the last minute. Okay, so everybody was prepared to give this morning, weren't you? I mean, you came, and, and I'm not going to have to send any brothers out there to make sure it's all together, right? <laughs> okay, let's, let's continue. It says, remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you'll give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting, God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything, more than just ready to do what needs to be done, as one psalmist puts it. He throws caution to the winds, giving to the needy in reckless abandon. His right living, right giving ways never run out, never wear out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For God is the one who gives seed to the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will give you... Uh, wait a minute, I got that in the... I've got an eight-translation Bible for my birthday from my son, and I'm trying to fi figure out which where, where I'm at here. Okay, in the message, okay, this most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your mind, meals is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something you can give them that you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Hallelujah. So your giving it is a way to praise God, and that's what we do with our, with our giving. We want to praise God with it. We want it to be a praise to Him. And, and when we're stingy and stubborn, and I know this is, this is not you, your heart is to give. I know it is because uh, pastors taught for sure, but you've, your heart has been changed. Your heart has been changed to give, to be a giver, because we want to be like God, right? Because God is the best giver, the greatest giver. He gave us everything, and we just want to honor Him. So this morning, as you prepare your offerings, we believe that you already heard from the Lord what to give, and uh, we just believe that God is going to bless you back of what you need. He's going to give you what you need when you need it, according to the Word of God. Amen. Can you believe that with me this morning? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord God, as we come before you this morning, Lord God, the creator of the universe, the God of all gods and King of kings, the Lord of Lords. We give you praise this morning, thanking you, Lord God, for your vision that you put in our heart, Lord God, not only to be givers, but, Father, to be givers like you. And, Lord God, I thank you that you've given us everything we have and we have need of, Lord God, and we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And, Father, your word says that when we do that, Lord God, we have all we need. And, Lord God, we don't come to you begging and pleading we just come to you agreeing with your word, Lord God, that what you said, what you promised, you're also able to perform. And I thank you this morning for the performance of your word, Lord God, in each and every heart as we give willingly, as we give faithfully, as we give cheerfully. In Jesus' name, amen. How's it 
everybody doing today? I'm Jody Fortner. I may not have met all of you, but uh, that's who I am, and I've been asked to come up here and speak about the Green Team today. Uh, Green Team is a ministry that we have taking care of the grounds out here, and if you guys will notice, we've got 22 acres of it, and it takes a lot. Uh, I've been a member of the Green Team the last two years. Uh, this year will be starting my third year, and I know uh, the last couple years we've kind of been light on help and had just a couple of people come out and, and help try and keep this place looking beautiful and and uh, just asking for your help today is basically what we're doing and uh, just uh, asking uh, that you offer your time your time for God come out when you can uh, there's some sign ups in the back and uh, please excuse my knees knocking and the the scratchiness in my throat. I'm a little nervous up here talking in front of this many people. So, but uh, be a blessing. That's what we're asking for. Come out. I know, guys. Most of you have grass at home. We got lots of grass out here too. Many hands make light work. And if you, you may not can uh, commit to every other Saturday or every third Saturday, but uh, commit and give an offering. Give an offering of your time, and you'll be blessed for it. And. That's about all I have to say. So sign up in the back, please. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. So good morning. <laughs> so again, our pastors are not with us. They are in Spain. They are doing the work of God. All is well. And uh, they definitely send their love, send their blessings, and keep them in your prayers. That way they can get everything accomplished that they're supposed to get accomplished while they're there. So, and Jody, thank you so much for coming up, and he has been very, very faithful these last several years on the green team, and it's been a blessing to his life, I know he said. <laughs> and uh, we look forward to having more of you, because we got, are only going up from here. It's only going to get bigger and better from here. And so we definitely need more hands. <laughs> to make a light work. So yeah, so it's no longer at the information table. If you can see, it's gone. Our information table is now in its appropriate place in the foyer. Bless the Lord. <laughs> so, anyway, so yeah, so go sign up back there. Um, also, for all of our legacy people, um, your ski trip is this weekend. So, have fun. <laughs> But any uh, final payments, final um, questions or anything like that can be directed towards Miss Michelle, as you know, or her team because Miss Michelle will be preaching this Wednesday. So give her a break this Wednesday. <laughs> so go ahead and talk to the Alvedrases, talk to the Campbells, talk to um, the Rodriguez's, and that way they'll get everything taken care of for you. And it is due Wednesday. So if you want to go, get everything in then. Um, we also, for spring break is coming up for the school district and things this, this month. And so tapestry will not be meeting in this month. So you guys get a break, go enjoy, enjoy your families. And uh, we will, however, still have prayer. So all you prayer warriors still come out next week. Um, so yes, but tapestry, you are relieved of your duties. So, and... I believe that is everything. Still, the men's advance is coming up, and the final sign-up where you get your discount, where you get a free T-shirt, is due this Wednesday also. So all legacy and all men, you got stuff to do. Ladies, you have a vacation. <laughs> so uh, men, we need your payments your and your registration because we need to turn that in to the Lubbock uh, Church. So we need that, and I got to tell this on Wednesday, all you men, who want to have a t-shirt. I need your sizes. They didn't place a, they didn't put some place for it. So um, if you could put that either on the sign up or on your registration, either one, but we need to get what size you want for your t-shirt. So, all right, I believe that is everything. Mr. David, if you come back up. And y'all be blessed. It's gonna be a good day. All right. Well, we're blessed today. We have we have some from Church on the Rock in Lubbock, and we have our our pastors, Ma 
mom and dad here and then a couple a couple other ladies from the church. We're glad that y'all are all here. And I know you came to hear Pastor Gary and to support him. And I believe that uh, he needs every bit of support he can get. <laughs> well, we're blessed that once again, you I know all of you, probably most of you have heard Pastor Gary, and we know that he's heard from the Lord. We know that he, he fellowships with the Holy Spirit and, and God leads him. And so I just believe this morning that we're going to hear a word from the Lord, fresh manna, like Miss Michelle prayed earlier. Fresh manna from the Lord. So you're going to be blessed this morning. Put your hearing ears on and let's receive the word from Pastor Gary. Thank you, sir. All right. It's good to be here. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless your family. Hallelujah. I, uh, <clears throat> I think it's very exciting in the years that we're living in, even with the gas prices and everything else. <clears throat> you know, uh, I, uh, 2012 is a new thing for me. Uh, when you start maturing life, you think, well, you can start re- planning on retirement. You know what? God doesn't have that for you. I don't care what your age is, Chris, whatever. Come up here, Chris. I, uh, my granddaughter, she come up, make sure she hugged me. Chris, I love you. All right, great. Go sit down. <coughs> so, <coughs> got all that personal things out of the way. But anyway, there's been a change going on. And, and uh, you know, over the years, I have taught, uh, I've been teaching for the last about 12 years on the Holy Spirit in my Sunday school class. And so you think, uh, there's, that should be enough. Well, I, I'm not going to talk to you today about the Holy Spirit. And that's really a shocker because people say, gosh, he, at, at the church they say, who's the Holy Spirit man? And they say, go see Pastor Gary. And so I, I'm all about the Holy Spirit. But today I have something that's going to help you get prepared for next week by this message. Because next week we will talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. And so I, I, I want to kind of do this, and I think I think what's happening uh, with me is that I uh, change the view in the way that I'm teaching, and so it's a challenge because you know what happens is so many people are coming to the church now, and uh, we over the years have just taught people about church life, how how to be a good Christian, how to live in the church. And so we, we learn about all the different positions. Jesus left us with ministries, apostles, prophets, teachers. Remember all those kind of teachings, you know, about evangelists, about helps, and about all the signs and miracles and stuff? But the Spirit came to me and he said, here's, here's what I want you to start doing. I want you to start teaching from a different perspective. I said, great. I'm so glad you're my helper. And the new way is, I said, I want to help you to live life better. And I'm not going to teach you today what you need to do in the church. I'm going to teach you what you need to do in life. If you will do this in your life, the church will grow. As a pastor, I've been commissioned to equip you to do the work of the ministry, not me. And so I started teaching things from looking at it from a different perspective uh, uh, position or a different process, uh, uh, a way of looking at things and saying this. He said, you know what? I want to teach you how to live this Christian walk. And uh, I have a little bit of experience with that because I've been doing it over 60 years. And so I know, I know what I'm talking about. I know what it means to be in the business world as a CEO in the business world. So I know a little bit about this. And so today I'm going to show you a very simple thing, because the word is supposed to be simple. Jesus didn't bring this word to make it difficult. He didn't bring it to make it hard for you to conform to. He didn't, he didn't bring commandments for you to have to be under, under performance to do. And so when, when we look at the scriptures today, and we're going to look at some things, and you've heard this scripture, and you've heard about these things that I'm fixing to tell you, but I'm going to take you to a little deeper level. Because, see, the deeper level is really where the mysteries of the gospel is at. And I want to know the mysteries. I don't, I, I'm past the surface. And so, you know, if you're being saved, you don't have to come up and get saved again. 
you're saved. If you know Jesus, you know Jesus. And so what happened is, is Jesus wanted us to go further because that's why he said it's expedient for me to leave. He told the disciples, he says, I have to get out of here because there's, I can't reach everybody. I can't be everywhere. But the Spirit can. And so he left us the Spirit to be our helper. If you look in John 14, 26, that's not the text, but John 14, 26, it says that the Father sends us a helper, comforter, and he will teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance. By the way, Jesus came in agreement and said, he comes, he said, because I declare it. And so we have the promise of the Father, and it's been declared by Jesus, so it's okay to have the helper in our lives. And so right now, I'm saying, Holy Spirit, you have this service. Holy Spirit, you have these people. You get their attention. Use this vessel to communicate, communicate this truth. All right. I'm going to go, and this is the base of our message today, is that uh, we're going to look, if I get the right place, we're going to look at Mark 11. This is a favorite scripture for uh, Brother Hagen. He loves Mark 11, verse 22 through, 20. He, he goes through 22, 23, and 24. He really loves this scripture. But I want to show you some depth today about this scripture. So it's going to help you live better tomorrow. Because what you're coming to learn today is, is not come to hear another message about, uh, about the disciples. You're coming to, today to see how can I live. If you can just put your mind in this, who are the disciples? You know what we've done at church? We've put the disciples in a place that we move them around, that they're common people. That's all they were. This whole book was written to common people. They didn't obtain something to be in the Bible, and they didn't go to the synagogue, they didn't go to the temple to get privileges to be in the Bible. When this was written, it was written for you. It wasn't written just because we have disciples, and we look at disciples, and we look at apostles, and we look at those and we said, wow, these are spiritual men. No, they were just like us. They were just trying to get through life. And Jesus come along and he said, I'm coming and I'm going to fulfill the wall that you've been under and you're going to have life and you're going to have it more abundantly. But see, we haven't embraced that truth. We're still trying to live church out there in the world instead of bringing our lifestyle from the world to church to be better equipped. We gather here today so as we come in this place and said, uh, Forsake not the fellowship of the saints. We come in here to give testimony of what Jesus did and what the Spirit's doing with us all day long, all week long. So we come in here as a celebration time. And so what happened is in this scripture, I'm going to show you something. In all the scriptures and all the things of the Bible, I found one truth that is the prerequisite to all truths. And if you're not walking in this truth, then all the rest doesn't seem like it has any value. What is this one truth? You know, many business men like to look at their bottom line. How about that, Johnny? 